Joe Justice has a very, very unique position on Optimus. It goes beyond the Randy Kirk theories that you may have been watching on my videos previously. Hi, this is Randy Kirk, in case you didn't know. And if you've enjoyed this series, and if you think you're going to enjoy this, hit the like button now, or you can wait till later and hit it when you know you liked it. Um, subscribe, and, because we're going to get Joe Justice back. He's promised he'll come back. I promise you I'll get him back on here again. But in that interview that I did with Joe Justice, we talked about the importance of Optimus in the Musk economy. If you didn't see those previous videos, I'll link those right, right here and also in the information below. Uh, you want to go back and look at those two conversations I've already had that I've already published with Joe Justice. We also talk about how far along we are with the bot in terms of how useful it might be, what useful tasks it might already be performing. His answers will shock you on multiple levels, I promise. There are almost certainly already Optimus robots in work, useful work situations in the factories at Tesla. Number two, that they will probably hand build a thousand this year and put them into work situations in the Tesla or in SpaceX or wherever, and that they'll have a, a, a what do you call it, a pilot line for Optimus by the beginning, by the first quarter of 2024. There's already a pilot, there's more than one pilot line for Optimus now. Oh. Um, uh, now, maybe useful, to me, it, it seemed fundamentally obvious, but I'm realizing for a lot of people, it's it's surprising. Optimus uses an unboxed architecture. It's already a next generation manufacturing system. You can see it in the contrived, beautiful lighting video. The ARM module is independently able to be worked on and independently self-testing like all Tesla products. This is why it was not surprising. When I was working in Tesla and building Model Ys, it's the same. The dashboard is testing itself before you install it. And then it starts doing integration connectivity tests as soon as you install it and the robots help you install it. So of course, Optimus is the same way. Well, the video shows you it is, so you don't have to just take my word for it. It's already unboxed. The way Tesla does new product development always is they start with a pilot line. That's how, right. that's how new product development begins. I see. So design, when Franz and Lars are talking about now, the conversation starts for a new product with design, engineering, procurement, supplier collaboration, and automation, automation for manufacturing, that's a group conversation. Well, well, imagine this group of three to 50 people standing around one of these poles with laptops yeah. and phones handing around. That's how it is. And what they do is they roll over or, or cart over or crane over or order manufacturing equipment and automation equipment or make their own. And at that pole, they start building out a pilot line and that is the design conversation that's how it begins now even better than that there's a lot of things that most of us think of when we think of optimus that have existed in tesla in many other forms for years they just don't look the same so the software that runs optimus is the same software that enables self-learning on most of the existing robots right and robots look a lot of different ways. Sometimes it looks like motorized rollers or a cart. Sometimes it looks like a, a robot, like an armed mm -hmm. red, typically in Tesla, a robot, uh, or sets of them together. Well, the factory is a robot, uh, and it's been running that software stack since alpha and beta of that software stack. So the idea of Optimus exists now in volume of hundreds of thousands and has been gathering great data and being refined over time. Now, this humanoid packaging of it has been in pieces for several years already. Things like a roughly human sized uh, arms to assist in, in manufacturing right. and, and like claw grabbers on different robots and manipulating end effectors on cranes uh, for a long time. So Optimus, in a sense, has been in volume production, manufacturing design for a long time. 
maybe the clippable piece is Optimus uses unboxed manufacturing architecture already, and there's already more than one pilot line producing Optimus. Okay, so then my thousand units in 2023 put into useful application so that the data can be coming back from actual Optimus fully humanoid type robots is not unrealistic. Totally not unrealistic. Now, the rate of manufacture is constantly increased and it's it, it the balancing metric is quality now with a prototype like optimus uh the quality metric keeps just getting placed more rigorous more rigorous more rigorous don't let another one off the pilot line until it's even higher bar even higher bar even higher bar so this is part of what's called the the ramp the production ramp is fundamentally quality limited or capability limited. Mm -hmm. So the ramp is going as fast for every Tesla product as it can while meeting its quality and capability wishes, mm -hmm. which which right now are in a ramp, an exponential ramp for all Tesla products. So of course, Optimus included. Mm -hmm. So whether the trade-off of how rapidly the capability should be growing hits a thousand, ten thousand, or or even more within the year is completely variable based on pace of innovation. Mm. And there's brilliant teams. We we can meet them online in AI day and then you now in investor day showing how fast they're ramping the capability. Also, my I, I, I left Tesla in 2020. I retired in 2020. So I'm an outsider now, like like most like most people from the outside it looks like the capability is growing so fast that they're not going to focus on volume. I don't know if it'll get to 10,000 this year or next. I, I don't know volume because the capability is still ramping so fast. The fact that Cybertruck is entering why well, already in um, volume increasing production in Texas tells us that its capability is 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 likely bizarrely great already like plaid great right right so so then the the robot will be as you as you point out i think they said it so well the other day when they were talking about the battery that they currently are not ramping as fast as they might because they're doing ab testing uh, as they're going because they got plenty of batteries that's, I think that's the way I understood it. We've got enough batteries. We don't have to push the 4680 right now in Austin because we've got plenty of batteries. So we can kind of slow it down for a minute and do a lot more A-B testing on the on the, the first line that they're that they're, they're ramping up um, because that will just make it that much better. Is that kind of what you just said about the robot? That maybe they would make 10 next week, except no, if we just do these few more tests, we maybe create something that is so much better that we can make a hundred the following week. Super similar. There's a nuance that I think is important, but okay. maybe no one thinks is important but me, but 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 super similar. And the nuance is they never slow down to test. Testing's automated. So testing is happening at the same or faster rate regardless of production volume. So it's not and A B testing never stops, ever. So it's not like we're going to stop A-B testing or we're going to slow down production to test more. Like Those are decoupled, which is a fundamental enabler of the way these companies produce. But what I will say is it's reconfiguring the production line to make a more capable product. So that happens all the time, no matter what. Anyway, um, even longer pilot line downtime is tolerated earlier on for more aggressive experiments, more blue sky experiments to, to try to ramp. So I wouldn't say testing, right. um, but uh, different part attempts, experimentation, maybe. Right. Experimentation never stops, um, but uh, grander, more significant experimentation. Maybe, maybe the community in the comments or you can help me find better words. But the nuance <laughs> I'd say is testing doesn't slow it down. <laughs> so then, so then, my other my other um, issue with Optimus, good good issue, is that 
we have to assume that these are way less than $100,000 each to build by hand, probably less than $50,000 each to build by hand. So if they have useful capacity now in factory, there would almost be no reason not to build them and put them at use. Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. So they, know, um, they know they can. So I was looking at the end of the line there in Shanghai in the videos that were out last week about the Shanghai factory. And it showed guys that were wiping down the car. It shows guys that were measuring the gaps, shows guys that were opening the doors. And it looked to me like all three of those jobs could have been done by the optimist that we saw on investor day. For sure. Now, part of I've done those jobs, <laughs> having worked in Tesla. Those are I, I, I worked or took notes on and journaled on every single position in Fremont, and that included the introduction of Giga Casting. I was lucky enough to be there while wow. Giga Casting was deployed in production. Um, so I've gotten to live those stories. One of the reasons you do a final wipe down. Uh, and manually close doors yourself and check gaps yourself. Those are all already done by machines. Yeah. A, a reason a human does it again anyway is part of your cross training. And because you installed and helped develop the charge port earlier on that car. Mm -hmm. and, and so you're going to visit that car again or even go all the way with it through every other operation to understand the completeness of the piece you did. It, that's for you. That's for the human wetware. I see. Um, so as long as there are humans in the factory, um, which includes design, right? Design happens in the factory. And I still think a lot of people don't understand that clearly yet. So if you're basically an employee, you will likely participate in all those activities. That's one of the good reasons that Optimus is humanoid shaped. So to fully automate those positions, they can still rotate with humans to build human cross-functional skill. Uh, they, they could look like some crazy lobster arachnid thing, and that might honestly be better. I, I don't I don't know. It could, in theory, be better. Um, imagine the factory full of gel and these dolphin-shaped robots do everything. Like that might that might be the optimum. Yeah. Yeah. However, it's then not backwards compatible with humans. And uh, trying to make a desirable future is one where humans can continue to interact where we want to, right? So those positions are already fully <laughs> roboticized. Um, but, to, but to your point, there is massive amount, especially in production ramp when things change very fast, that are done by human hands mm -hmm. as automation is introduced. Mm -hmm. uh, that can be skipped entirely or blended with humans as it all becomes optimized for Optimus. The future of of Tesla um, is good. <laughs> I love the clarity. I love the clarity <laughs> of your speech. <laughs> so, so um, Joe, I would uh, love to have you back anytime on my channel. I, 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 my goal with you today, and I hope I reached it, was to talk about stuff that nobody else has talked about. Uh, I do it from the standpoint of somebody who has been in manufacturing um, for 30 years of my life. I was a manufacturer and so get a little bit of it. Nothing on the level of what you or, or Elon do, but it's a it's a help to have at least a little a little bit of background doing it. Um, so I, I appreciate you coming today and I do hope that you'll come back on, a, on another chance. Randy, with your consulting <clears throat> and for everyone who might be listening or watching this, uh, something really exciting happened recently for Tesla, which is they've very publicly, again, invited other companies to be part of this radical growth story towards hopefully a more exciting future for humanity. This happened before Musk saying more companies, please get into tunneling. Oh. Nobody did. So Musk said, all right, we'll make the boring company. And now there's a Musk company in it innovating faster than anyone else. And they're the largest growth tunneling company in the world and ever in the history of tunneling. Well, Musk has said again, and, and not just Musk, many other staff members, here's another opportunity. Do you want to get into it? And that is hydrogen and massive heat transfer, different types of heat pumps, including extremely large scale for industrial operations and, and also mining. 
Musk yeah. has said, we do have prototype mining operations that are already the best in the world, and we are sharing how they operate with other companies who are interested in getting involved. We don't have to do it all ourselves. So we have this window of opportunity to do some hard work and be part of this awesome story. So your companies can contact you for support on this, for consulting. Maybe some people will take my classes. I'm at abi-agile.com. Uh, and more people can be part of this story. Randy, it's my pleasure rocking with you and your audience today. Thank you very much. All right, thank you as well. So if any of this was useful, as I said at the beginning, you know what to do, like and subscribe and all of that jazz. And as usual, thank you again, Joe Justice. And it's been great talking to you. Click the link below to get your paperback, Kindle or audiobook now.